Hollywood Studios, part one, take one. Welcome to Coaster Keepers. I'm Morgan. I'm Evan. We had five days at Disney World and one day at Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure. Of these days, two of them were at Hollywood Studios. This is our second video in the series reviewing our trip, so be sure to check out our first video, which was our review of Magic Kingdom, if you haven't already. So today we're gonna to be talking about Hollywood Studios. Um, this is part one, just the Hollywood sections. Um, and as for part two, we will be talking about Star Wars, Galaxy's Edge, and Toy Story Land, the more movie themed sections. Definitely stick around for the middle and end of this video when we talk about Hollywood Studios newest attraction, which is Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. We are going to be reviewing this attraction, so spoiler alert if you don't want to hear too many details about it. We went to Hollywood Studios on two separate days. The first day was March 9th, and the next day that we went was on March 13th. So it was about three months after Rise of the Resistance opened in Galaxy's Edge, and it was about five days after Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway opened. So it was definitely the busiest park um, out of the four parks at Disney at the time. Um, but the park was listed to open at 8 a.m. both days. We got there, I'd say, around 7.30, and there was a lot of people there, but they were letting people into the park before 8, and then they would just have you get in the queue of whatever ride you wanted to ride, um, and you can also do your boarding pass. We'll talk more about the boarding pass for Rise of Resistance, but you could also do that <clears throat> right when the park actually opened at 8. So personally, I was really impressed with how the cast, member, cast members handled the crowds, they got everyone in the park, um, from security to admissions and then uh, crowd control. They got everyone in the park in an organized manner, well controlled, and I was really impressed with that. So that was a good start to the day. We will review each section of our experience. So first thing we're going to talk about is the dining, the food um, in Hollywood Studios. Yes, we got to talk about the food, you know us. So um, first, just some snacks that we had. Um, throughout our two days, we went to Anaheim Produce. We got a blue, blue raspberry frozen lemonade. Um, we got a churro and we got one of the little dill pickles that are in the bag. And let me tell you, those are the best value. It's a big dill pickle, only $2. So great, <laughs> cheap snack if you like pickles. I think Anaheim Produce has really refreshing snacks. Um, I will say the churro was good. I love churros, but definitely not as good as the Tomorrowland churro we had on our first day at Magic Kingdom. So just think about that. Um, but, the, but the blue raspberry frozen lemonade was delicious. It was amazing. And it was really, the pickles that we got were really good. So I would recommend it. Definitely a good find. Yeah, the churro was a little bit crunchy. Just didn't seem as fresh. Um, but it was still good. And yeah, the lemonade and the pickle, very refreshing. Then the next uh, thing, we had lunch one of the days at Fairfax Fair, um, which is over on Sunset Boulevard over there. And we got the seven layer rice bowl with chicken. Um, and I thought that was very good. The only thing that was really weird is I really don't like beans and it had beans in it. And I was like, can I get this without beans? And the cast member there was like really grilling me if I had an allergy. Um, and I was like, I mean, kind of, it, I don't really like them. Like they don't make me feel good. And she was like grilling me. She's like, are you allergic though? And finally we were just like, yes, I am. I feel like whenever stuff like that happens, I'm always the one that's like, yes, like. Yeah, and she was going us because Morgan immediately was like, yes, and I like hesitated because I just didn't expect it. And then so she was like, is it really an allergy? And I was like, yeah, it was, it had rice, chicken, it had like a avocado sour cream sauce and like different herbs and spices that were really good. It was really filling. We split it for lunch and we were fine. Yeah, we've been splitting a lot of food on this trip and um, I think it was, it worked out. We got to try a lot of different things. The next place that we went to was Mama Melrose's <laughs> Restaurante Italiano. 
something like that. <laughs> so we ordered a house-made Italian meatball, which was very good and very large. Um, good thing we just kind of split our meal here too. Um, and then we also had the wood grilled chicken and penne pasta. So it was like a four cheese sauce um, and then it had Romano cheese fresh and um, fresh parsley, parsley on it as well. What did you think of that place, Evan? I thought it was really good. We had really good service there from our waitress, which was great. She was super nice and it was kind of funny. We didn't really plan on going there. Um, we were trying to decide what we wanted to eat for lunch. And I was like, well, Morgan, what are you hungry for? And she just jokingly was like, I want a meatball. And so I searched on the Disney app literally for meatball in Hollywood studios. And then I found the meatball on the menu. And then it was like, there's a reservation available right now. And I was like, okay. And so we went over there. Um, but yeah, the meatball was big. It was like one big meatball that we split. It was an appetizer. And then we got the chicken and penne pasta, which had like a four cheese sauce. It was really good. And we even got bread since we ordered an entree, which I didn't know. But if you order an entree there, you get free bread, which was really good as well. Yeah, really lucky that we got that um, spot to dine in because we had we had made all of our dining reservations so early and we just had good luck at Hollywood Studios, um, even with this next restaurant that we're going to talk about. Yeah, so our first night for dinner, we went to the Sci-Fi Drive-In theater restaurant, sci-fi drive-in theater restaurant. And we went there because we had, they had a couple things on the menu that we were really interested in ahead of time. So again, this was another meal. We split an appetizer and an entree. We got fried dill pickles, which we both love. Um, obviously we talked about pickles earlier. We both love pickles. So we got fried dill pickles and then we got a cheese steak, which was like thinly sliced steak, uh, caramelized onions and bell peppers on a togi roll with provolone and beer cheese sauce and then we also got a donut dessert with ice cream and it was had like almost apple pie filling I think on top so what do you think about this dinner Morgan? So the sci-fi dine-in restaurant was really cool um, Evan kind of surprised me with it because he got that reservation and um, didn't really tell me I think he <laughs> but didn't really tell me what what the experience was going to be like I think the, the name says it but um, I didn't realize that it that you got to sit in um, these car like tables and um, watch all the sci-fi movies. I think this was a really great date restaurant for us. Um, Evan also said it would be a really great restaurant for like a family, um, which I agree. But I think even better a date restaurant. Um, the I fried fried dill pickles are one of my favorites. So like I think that's one of the reasons why. He picked this place, um, you know, about from our Magic Kingdom review that we were searching for donuts pretty much all over. Um, and this was the first place that we found one. So it was very good, very sweet, um, but not too much. I think because we split it, it wasn't too much. And like Evan said, the cheese steak was really good. Probably one of my favorite dinners. Yeah, it was great food, great experience. Um, the one thing I would say is we were kind of in a rush and the way they order there, it's like by car. So if you're a group of two, you kind of have to wait for the other people to get ready to order. So I'd recommend if we were to go back to do this, but uh, we kind of had a reservation right before Fantasmic. So I'd recommend if you can try to get one a little earlier so you can enjoy the experience. The next thing we're gonna talk about, of course, are the attractions. And again, as we said earlier, this is not gonna include Star Wars Galaxy's Edge and Toy Story's Land. That's gonna be in part two. So this is just the attractions. What Morgan was saying earlier, the, the Hollywood Studios uh, part of it. So the first thing on the list is Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy. This is a show type attraction. Um, guests go and they sit in these little bleachers and Lightning McQueen is up at the front. There's a lot of screens around. Um, showing different driving simulators and Lightning McQueen, the car is there himself. Um, what do you think about this, Morgan? It was really cool because Cars is, um, I love Pixar movies, so Cars is a favorite. Um, and although this is more, I think, geared toward preschool families, um, we decided to go 
and check out this attraction. And it was actually really cool. Um, it was a great, it wasn't too long, wasn't too short, great amount of time. If you need to just chill in the air conditioning, it's a great place as well. Um, it had a great story um, and it had, most of the characters actually made an appearance in it. It's not just about lightning. So I thought that was cool as well. Yeah. And the cast member that was in there was really getting into it, which I thought was really funny. And like you said, yeah, it's really great for, I think, preschool age kids, um, especially if they like Lightning McQueen, they would love this. All right. And the next thing we're going to talk about is the newest attraction, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Uh, it's the newest attraction at Walt Disney World. It opened only five days before we wrote it. It's a trackless dark ride. Uh, it's in the replica of the Chinese theater right in the center of Hollywood Studios, and it replaced the great movie ride. And I have to take off my jacket here because I got my... <laughs> you had your shirt on! Yeah, I got my Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway shirt here, and it has Conductor Goofy, my favorite. Aww. I didn't know that you were going to wear that for this video. You surprised me. Yeah, it was a surprise. So, um, we were lucky enough to get to ride this twice. I mean, it opened literally five days ago and we got to ride it twice. So, um, awesome that we were able to do that. But this ride, I think Evan and I can both agree was a, a highlight of the trip. Um, incredible technology amazing story, so many surprises. We don't want to spoil too much, but we do want to give an honest review of the ride. Yeah, so the everything about the ride is just like amazing. Um, their pre-show is really cool and there's a really cool surprise that we're not going to spoil, um, but we definitely did not see coming at the end of the pre-show. Um, and then when you get on the ride, I think it kind of tricks you, at least for me personally, because the Ride vehicles look similar to that of the Great Movie Ride. And if, everyone, if anyone knows the Great Movie Ride, you just kind of rode straight and around, but you're all in one ride vehicle just going on a track. But no, this is definitely a trackless um, dark ride. So different parts of the ride vehicle break apart at certain moments and you get a different experience every time you ride, which is cool. Um, it uses the RFID technology similar to Rise of the Resistance. And yeah, I mean, it's also just beautiful, the attraction. When you go, you're really immersed in the cartoon world of Mickey and Minnie and the projection mapping and all of the things like that. I mean, it really feels like you're in the cartoon. So I just have a question. So was the great movie ride, it was a train? It wasn't a train, but the seats were very similar to what they looked like when you got on to Mickey and Minnie's Runway Railway. It's just those like seats with the straight up and down back and a long row. Mm -hmm. um, but it was on a track, so you just moved right. predictably on the track. Yeah, so this was my first trip to Disney World, so I hadn't ever been on the ride, um, the predecessor ride, but. Um, it was Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is definitely so hard to say. We're both struggling. <laughs> um, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is could honestly be um, a completely new section of the park itself. I think um, this direction that they're taking these uh, iconic characters is really cool. I I love what they're doing with it. They um, one thing that Evan and I both liked is that. They gave Mickey and Minnie an original song in this ride. And mm. we the song, we've been listening to it all the time on Spotify. It's actually on there. Um, I really like that it's retro, but also something new that we've never seen before. This reimagination of Mickey and Minnie and all their friends. This ride that they were in, um, completely colorized differently to be almost like 3D, but in 2D. It's definitely vibrant and fun, um, great for your whole family. Just loved this ride. I thought it was so fun. It was just, you know, it's not anything crazy. It's not thrilling, anything like that, but it is just so fun. So, 
So the next ride that we went on was Muppet Vision 3D. So this is a 3D film um, that features the Muppets, of course. It opened in 1991. And this was actually the last project that Jim Henson worked on before his tragic death. Um, so what do you think about Muppet Vision 3D, Morgan? I really liked Muppet Vision 3D. I liked this one better than um, Philhar Magic. Definitely. Yeah, it's just a fun, quick little film to sit in the AC and kind of relax and have a good laugh. And then the next ride on our list is Rockin' Roller Coaster. This is an enclosed launch coaster built by Vacoma, and it has a max speed of 57 miles per hour, which is pretty fast for a Disney roller coaster. Three inversions, and it has a ride duration of a minute and 22 seconds. Morgan, what were your thoughts on Rock and Roller Coaster? I like Rock and Roller Coaster. Really liked that this ride was starring Aerosmith. At, um, some awesome tunes for the ride. Really cool. So yeah, Rock and Roller Coaster. It's fun. Um, there's not a crazy amount going on. You know, it's not the craziest coaster. Um, I don't know. I enjoy it. It's surprisingly smooth for Vacoma, I think. But yeah, it's fun, but it's not definitely not my top, one of my favorite coasters at all. Shout out to my best friend, Ashley. Walking Roller Coaster is her favorite ride, her favorite coaster at Disney World. Shout out to Ashley. All right, next on the list, we have Star Tours. Um, the original Star Wars ride, and this is not actually in Galaxy's Edge, so that's why we're going to talk about it now. Um, and it's actually the first attraction that Disney made that wasn't based on their own IP at the time. Star Wars wasn't their IP. It is now. But um, the ride originally opened in 1989 and then reopened as Star Tours The Adventure Continues, which is the current ride, pretty similar but different, um, in 2011. We rode this one right at the beginning of our second day. We waited in the line while we were um, trying to do our boarding pass. Morgan, what do you think about this? I don't know anything about Star Wars, not a singular thing. Um, <laughs> I find interesting when we talk about Galaxy's Edge, but um, I guess for this ride um you know not i don't really want to compare it to galaxy's edge i just want to compare it to all the other stuff we did at hollywood studios is it's fantastic honestly um you don't need to know star wars to ride it um i think it's it's full of action adventure and even just like a little bit of humor in the ride too which was pretty cool <laughs> yeah i love c3po uh, when he's in the ride and he's driving. He's not supposed to be driving, so that's fun. But, yeah, I mean, it's a fun ride. It's not going to be at the um, top of my Star Wars rides, as we'll probably talk about later, but it's fun, and it was definitely really revolutionary for the time that it was built. All right, and the last ride attraction we're going to talk about is, of course, the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. Uh, it was designed, of course, by Walt Disney Imagineering, built by the Otis Elevator Company. Um, and it's actually the second tallest attraction at Walt Disney World. It's only six inches shorter than Expedition Everest at 199 feet. And it's not over 200 feet because they didn't want to put the flashing lights that you have to have for airplanes. So that's why nothing at Disney World's over 200 feet. That's Fun fact. I didn't know that. Yeah, they didn't want it to mess with the immersion and the theming. So they made it the tallest things at 199. Morgan, what do you think about Tower of Terror? I don't really always like um, rides with drops in them, um, um, but I had to do this since it's kind of the token Hollywood Studios attraction, um, and it was very cool, very cool. Uh, I love the pre-show in um, learning about the family that lived in the Hollywood Hotel. And I guess I didn't really know how this ride worked. Um, <laughs> Cause when I <laughs> wrote it, we did the whole experience. We got on 
got in the elevator with our uh, bellhop, whatever, what is, what do they call them? Bellhop? Yeah, yeah. Our bellhop got in the elevator and we're going through the twilight zone and that was, it was amazing. The effects that they did and kind of just everything around you, you change where you even are. But I guess I didn't realize that it was going to drop more than once because, so we get up there, spooky music plays, it drops. I'm like, oh, that was awesome. All right. I look over it. <laughs> and then we drop again. And I'm like, I did not, I did not know that was going to happen. I, it scared me so much that I actually kicked the, we were in the back row. I kicked the seat in front of me and got a huge bruise on my knee. I didn't know. Um, but, oh, very entertaining ride. Um, we actually rode this more than once, once, which mm -hmm. is that saying a lot that I must have liked it because I don't really prefer things that uh, drop like that. Evan, what would you think of my reaction? <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't know that you thought it only dropped the once, so I thought it was really funny that you screamed more when we dropped the second time than the first time. Um, and I was sad that you, I know I didn't tell you. <laughs> I tried not to tell you a lot because I didn't want to ruin anything for you. Yeah. But, but also we wrote it twice. The second time, it definitely was a different pattern than the first time. So they're, they're really good about that. Yeah. They use a computer like randomizer so that it's actually a different pattern of drops every time you ride. So that's something that's really cool. Um, and the one thing you were talking about the effects, the thing that still amazes me is when you're looking into the hallway and there's like the rooms and everything, and then it just turns into like yeah. space with just the stars. You don't move anywhere. It's just like the effects that does it. And I'm always shook by that. But yeah, I love this one. It's one of my favorites. I think that ride is really memorable for me too. Like um, I, I remember every detail of that ride and not to say I don't remember the others but there's only so much I think I could remember from everything that we did so that yeah was and it's been <laughs> over a month now since we've been there too so yeah all right and now we're going to talk about the entertainment and other character experiences and things that we did at Hollywood Studios so first thing on our list is Beauty and the Beast live on stage Beauty and the Feast live was lovely. Yeah, I like how the Lumiere and them are not like humans, like dressed. You know, yeah. the Broadway show, you can tell they're humans, but I like that they actually look like they do in the movie for this show. I think they had to make it stand out and be its own. Next live, sh live show experience that we did was the Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular. Evan, what were your thoughts? Yeah, so we were able to get, after we used our three fast passes the first day, this was one that we were able to get after we used our original three. So we kind of grabbed a fast pass for this and it gave us good seating right in the middle. Um, I thought it was fun. It's a lot of, it's, it's really cool. It's like what it says, it's a stunt spectacular. So it's all of showing you how they do the stunts behind Indiana Jones, which is really interesting. There's some crowd engagement, which is cool. Um, the only thing about the show is, it is kind of long, so if you're trying to hit all the attractions or all the rides and things like that in Hollywood Studios and you only have one, so I would say if you are um, trying to get all the attractions in one day, then I would say maybe skip this one if you're not a big show person, but it is really entertaining, but I would say from the time that we went in for our Fast Passes and the time that we actually got out of the show, it was like an hour and a half. So it, it kind of takes up a long period of time. Very, very entertaining. Um, definitely, it's long, but it keeps you awake because of all the action that's happening. Um, I think to me, this is like how I imagined Hollywood Studios would be. Um, obviously, there's rides and other um, attractions, but this is kind of how I think they envisioned like a Hollywood Studios type park. Um, so I'm surprised that Disney doesn't have more that's kind of like, similar to this um at the parks they definitely should so that's my recommendation yeah uh yeah they did have they used to have like a stunt car stunt show um but that's where toy story land is now so i can't complain too much 
this is Indiana Jones. So it was like vaguely familiar to me. I like, I've never been to Disney World, but for some reason that show is like, like, I don't, I don't even want to say vaguely. Like I literally the whole show, I was like, I've seen this before. I don't think I like watched a video of it or anything. I just think it was oddly similar um, to the retired Universal Studios show. Um, or maybe, maybe it's not at all. And I just, they were both shows. But, um, it's the show I'm comparing it to was the eighth voyage of Sinbad show that was at Universal. Um, I saw that when I was like a kid. And for some reason, I just kept thinking that that and the Indiana Jones show was literally the same. We were doing a lot of research trying to figure it out. And we finally put it together with the Sinbad show. The next thing that we did, um, we saw a film. We saw Vacation Fun, which is located in what we think might be called the Mickey's Shorts Theater. Um, and that's kind of funny because the, it's, they show Mickey and Minnie Mouse short movies, but it's the seats in the theater have Mickey's cartoon shorts on them. Um, so kind of, kind of funny wordplay that they did there. If you're looking for where it is, it's kind of right diagonally across from the Indiana Jones Sun Show, um, right by that small little echo lake there. I don't think a lot of people know about it because it wasn't very full. And like we said, like Mickey and Minnie just opened up, the ride just opened up like five days ago. So the park was packed. Um, and there was nobody at this. I mean, obviously, they, it's probably not their priority, but I found it interesting since it's a new-ish attraction. They have a new film, the Vacation Fun film in there. And from what I read, um, they're going to be changing up the films and everything that are in there. So um, it wasn't really explained that well on the app or anything. So I just thought I would give that as part of the review. Yeah. And next, we met a couple characters. So first one on the list is we met Sully, James P. Sullivan from Monsters, Inc. and Monsters University. Morgan, how did you like meeting Sully? Sully was big and fluffy. Um, I really didn't realize how tall he was, but <laughs> he was definitely um, super nice to us. We waited in quite a line for him. Um, probably the longest meet and greet line of all of them. Um, yeah. He's kind of hidden. You have to go into um, the museum about Disney World. I don't know what it's called. And the theater, the theater is playing Onward, um, a, like a clip of Onward when we went there. Um, we didn't watch it, but um, so there's the, the museum and then the little theater. And then in the back, um, that's where Sully is. And uh, he couldn't sign your books, but, so he's the only one I think we don't have a signature for. Oh no, just, just kidding. We don't have, well, we'll talk about that in a second, but um, yeah, he can't sign your book. Uh, he's not like Buzz where he gives you like a stamp, but um, what did you think of meeting Sully? That man was so large. <laughs> I should say that monster, but <laughs> I mean, I'm six foot. So I'm like, I think I'm a fairly tall guy and he warped me and Sally gives a good hug. Let me tell you, he's so fluffy and he's so big and he's just fun. <laughs> uh, the next character that we met was Edna Mode. Um, and we met, we met um, just Pixar characters this day. So that was pretty exciting. I love Pixar. She might be little, but she has big taste. So I was a little nervous that she was going to say something about my fanny pack, but um, she said I looked very stylish. Um, and she, I think she commented on our height difference. She yeah, was, she did. Yeah. Um, but I loved her. I loved going to see her studio and everything there. She was fabulous, darling. Fabulous, darling. And then, um, Mrs. Incredible, she kind of roams outside of um, where Edna is. On the first day, we wanted to meet her, but we didn't. And then we met her finally on the second day. And she's definitely a cool mom. Um, <laughs> we were like, I was, because there was a bunch of littler kids around, and I didn't want to, like, 
shove in front of them to get a picture with Mrs. Incredible. So I was just hanging out and she came right up to me and signed my book, um, which was really nice. We got a great picture with her. Um, I honestly wanted her outfit, so I should have asked Edna to make me one. <laughs> you should have. <laughs> so another thing we did was Voyage of the Little Mermaid. And it is a interesting show, I would say. A lot of it is puppets and live actors and rain falling from the ceiling. Um, so it's interesting. I thought it was cool. I liked it. I'm just saying it kind of showed its age a little bit. Yeah. But I enjoyed it. I guess so. Um, I don't know. I think, like, because you've been to the park so many times, you think, like, things show their age. But for me, I I think a lot of the stuff was so magical. Um, still, Like, regardless, like, I, I didn't even notice. All right. And, of course, if we're talking about Hollywood Studios and we're talking about entertainment, we have to talk about Fantasmic. I just love Fantasmic. It's definitely my favorite show throughout all of the Disney parks. It is so much fun. But, Morgan, this was your first time experiencing Fantasmic. What did you think? Fantasmic. We were seated all the way to the left of the amphitheater. Um, I thought it, I, it didn't matter where we were sitting. Um, just giving you kind of details. That's where we were. Um, I thought we could see perfectly from this spot. We were not too far up at the top, but not at the bottom. Um, great view. Uh, it was a great night too. It was, um, I think it was a little bit chillier at night when the sun went down at most parks, but I think that night at Hollywood Studios, it was really nice. So it was a great night to be there. I loved the show. Uh, first time ever hearing the Fantasmic music. I, I don't think I've seen, um, I, I've seen Fantasia, Fantasia, but I don't, I can't really remember it, to be honest at all. Um, so the music was wonderful. My favorite part is like the finale with the boat, the boat <laughs> um, with all the characters on it. And um, the villains, the villains were awesome. I was just gonna say one of my favorite parts is, um, of course there's the part where they're, before the villains come in, they're projecting um, the villains onto the water in front of the actual scene. And Jafar is, talking he says now you'll see how snake like I can be and the water goes away and there's this massive snake that just goes across the whole like mountain set and it's just so cool that transition the first time I saw it it was just like so unexpected that they could make that happen so quickly and behind the water you couldn't tell what was going on so that's like one of my favorite moments overall recapping the day part one of Hollywood Studios um the biggest surprise so for me, the biggest pleasant surprise, I know we've talked about a lot, but it was Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Way Away. I think I have two surprises. One was Tower of Terror because I didn't, it was, surprise, it was a surprise to me that um, the ride went up and down fast in all these different directions and not just in one drop. Um, I think another thing that surprised me were, um, they. <laughs> this is like a surprise, but the snack at Anaheim Produce. We had so many good finds. We had the pipple and the blue raspberry lemonade. Next thing, did you have any disappointments at all? I don't have Something any. that... No. Yeah, we're, we started adding this into our videos just because, and I didn't have very many disappointments. The only thing was like the cast member asking me about the allergy for beans, but <laughs> that's not even a real... Um... Maybe, like, I wish, because we went to Sci-Fi Cafe and then immediately to Fantasmic, I'm pretty sure. We were in a rush. Yeah. Uh, I I wouldn't say this is a disappointment, but I wish we could have hung out at the Sci-Fi Cafe longer. Um, and yeah. maybe we could have if our food came out faster because they have to, you have to wait for your whole table. And we just ordered, like, one, pretty much one thing. Yeah, that's true. I would agree. I wish we could have spent more time in that yeah. diner. Cool. Favorite ride? Right, and that, oh, my favorite ride, it was Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Way Away. That was my favorite ride. <laughs> <laughs> At least for this video, that was my favorite ride. <laughs> yeah. Again, they were just talking about the, the rides that we've discussed today. Yeah. 
in part one of Hollywood Studios. It's so hard to pick a favorite ride in Hollywood Studios with all of their new attractions there. Um, when we when we told our friends and family about our trip, both of us said I, our favorite ride of the whole trip was Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Morgan, what was your favorite food in Hollywood Studios? My favorite food was Mama Melrose's, and it was the meatball. And <laughs> because I was weird, I was just craving. I was like, oh, a meatball would be so good right now. Then it, that place was delicious. Yeah, it was very, very good. I would agree. Um, but my favorite food, I'm going to pick something different. I'm going to go with the cheesesteak from the sci-fi uh, dine-in theater. I think also I was really hungry when we were eating it, but it just tasted so good to me. I used to work at a restaurant where we made good cheesesteaks, and this one was even better. So I would definitely recommend it. And also the fried pickles. We didn't finish them in the theater so we like wrapped them up in the plastic wrap and took them to Fantasmic I mean, which was a great choice. I forgot about that. What was your favorite memory? I want you to go first because I think the whole day was a favorite memory. All right for me I'm gonna sound repetitive but I'm gonna pick a specific moment in Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway during the pre-show. I'm not gonna spoil it but at the end something really surprising happened and it's really fun and unexpected. And that was my favorite memory. My favorite, I just want to say Mickey and Minnie's for my favorite memory. I'm going to sound repetitive, but I think my favorite memory from that ride is Daisy's Dance Studio. Yeah. That is my favorite scene. That concludes our review of part one of Hollywood Studios. Um, thank you for everyone for watching. If you like our videos, um, Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and if you want to turn on your notification, you can be the first to know when our part two of our Hollywood Studios review, the review of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge and Toy Story Land, that is going to be really fun. That's going to be a good one. So definitely um, keep up with our channel um, for when we post part two of Hollywood Studios, their two newest lands. And otherwise, just subscribe. We're going to be making more park reviews. Of course, we're going to continue our Disney park reviews. But if we can ever get out in the world again, we're going to be doing vlogs and park reviews at different amusement and theme parks across the country. Thank you. All right. Well, we will see you in the next video. Thanks.